just watch while the video is playing. Do not try to work or get materials while the video is playing or you will miss important things. There will be times when you pause the video and follow the instructions before continuing the video. Okay guys, so I found out Tuesday afternoon that the procedure that I originally told y'all would be scheduled for Thursday had actually been moved to Wednesday today for you. So I am up here um, Tuesday evening trying to get this recorded so that y'all can somewhat move on with the project without me. Basically, I'm gonna be out there Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which is three class periods. So I'm basically expecting you to get two class periods worth of work done in three days. Um, because I know that you're not going to be able to move as quickly without me here, that you're going to have questions along the way that I will not be here to answer. So we're all just going to try to do the best that we can. At the end of it, um, I have some expectations for what you will have, but if we struggle with those, we're going to make it work. We will reassess whenever I am back next week. But this is basically what we're doing. This video is for my eighth graders and my ninth graders because y'all are both doing similar things. So I think I can cover it all in one video. Um, both groups are taking a photo, putting a grid on the photo, putting a grid on a piece of paper, and then using the grid on the photo to inform how you draw on the piece of paper. So eighth graders, you have a photo that is saved to your iPad of a still life that you took last night, hopefully. If you did not do that, or you were not here yesterday to get that information, there is a photo on your Google Classroom, if you go to the stream, that says, if you do not have a photo, use this photo. That is the photo that you will be using. Ninth grade, you were supposed to look up a celebrity or just a random model using one of three websites that I gave you yesterday to find an image that had the correct license type that you now have saved to your iPad. Once again, if you do not have that, go to your Google Classroom stream, find the image that says, if you don't have a photo, use this one instead, and that is what you're going to be using. So the first thing you're going to need to do is download the app Tracing Buddy. That should be on your self-service. Um, if you go to it, it's like a little blue icon, I think. So you're gonna download the app Tracing Buddy. So what I want you to do is pause the video and then come back to the video when everyone has their Tracing Buddy downloaded from their self-service. If you are a Chromebook user, you can search, put a grid on a photo and you will be able to find tons of web apps that will let you put a grid on a photo. So if you are, if you have an iPad, download Tracing Buddy. If you are on a Chromebook, um, just search, put a grid on a photo, you will find something on there. So pause the video, come back to it when everyone is ready with their photo and their grid app, Tracing Buddy, downloaded to their iPad. Okay, so I am here in the Tracing Buddy app. Mine already has a photo because it just saves whatever the last photo you used was, and this was apparently the last photo that I used. Yours should probably be blank here, I would assume. Um, you are going to add your photo by clicking right here on the little camera roll button and then choosing Photo Library. So I'm going to show you first with a horizontal photo. Ninth grade, all of your photos should be vertical. If you're doing a person, I'm pretty sure that all of your photos would be vertical. Eighth grade, yours may be vertical or may be horizontal depending on how you took the photo. So I'm gonna show you first with a horizontal and with then in a second with a vertical. It works the same either way though. So after I'm done here, I'm gonna click next. This is what's important. So if you are doing a horizontal one, the way that this one is, you want right here where it says horizontal, you want it to say four. So if it says more or less, you use these little plus and minus to adjust. And where it says vertical, you want it to say three. And again, use these to adjust. Um, and then you are just going to adjust this until it is kind of cropped the way that you want it to be. You do want to make sure that there is no white around the edges. You do want it to be zoomed all the way in, but you don't want it to be zoomed in so far that you're cropping stuff off. So just find something that looks comfortable. Looks like something that you'd be able to draw and then you'll leave it at that. So let me go back now and show you a vertical image. So here's my vertical image. I'm gonna click next. Now here, we're gonna switch it. So instead of saying four horizontal by three vertical, I am going to change it around and it's going to be three horizontal by four vertical. And then again, I am going to adjust it until my portrait kind of fills the space here. So I don't wanna go too far and have the top of her head cropped off. Um, but I don't want to have any white space left. So I want to adjust it, especially because this 
is going to be pretty hard to draw. To draw a face that small and the grid lines are not really going to help you because her entire face is almost inside one of these little boxes. So you want to zoom in until it is pretty large and um, like I say, you want to make sure that it's not like cropping stuff off, but you know, something about like that would be good. So either way, if you were doing horizontal or vertical, um, we're going to go to the next one. Actually, before we go to the next one, let's talk real quick about this. You need to make sure that this is turned on. If you turned it off where it said squared grid, you need to make sure to turn that back on. Then once you have it adjusted, you're happy with the way it looks, then you're going to go to the next screen. Okay. No, thank you. So you have some options here. There's a few different ways that you can make your image look. Yours probably does not have red lines. That's the last one that I set up was that way. Um, yours probably, I think, just has, it comes to fault with like black lines. So I can go here and pull down this little menu. Yours may have had the menu on it already. I'm not sure which defa default is. Um, but you can kind of go in here and mess around with some options. So this is grid tools that I'm on right now. And I can change the thickness of the grid. You do want something that is fairly noticeable, but you don't want something that obscures too much of the image. So something about like this is pretty good. Um, then I can go back and change the color of it. So make it something that is kind of easier to see. Eventually when we start shading and stuff, your images will be in black and white. But for now, if you wanna pick a color um, to help you see the grid line show up a little bit more, you totally can. You can also, especially if you have kind of thicker grid lines, you can lower the opacity of the grid lines. If there's something like behind the grid lines that you had trouble seeing, um, you can go back and lower the opacity. There are several different things you can kind of play around with. These other things are things that you don't really need. You could, you know, change the, uh, like the background color, stuff like that. You really don't need to do any of this though. All you really need to do is mess with the grid and get the grid looking good for you. And then you need to click the little eyeball in the corner to turn all of this off. So if you missed it, that is this little eyeball right here, turns the menu on and off so that you can see. So I'm gonna turn it off so that I can see more of my image. If you have a horizontal image, you'll just stay this way. If you have a vertical image, you're gonna rotate it. Zoom so that the ad is not blocking any of your image. And then you're gonna take a screenshot. If you don't know, there is a little camera button on your keyboard that takes a screenshot way easier. Um, so you can do that instead of um, having to like hold down both the buttons at the same time. But you're going to take a screenshot of this to save it to your camera roll just in case you know you need to delete the app to make room or when you come back later, the image is gone or something like that. So you're going to take a screenshot and save it to your camera roll. And then that is where we're done with the Tracing Buddy app for now. Okay, so you have heard the instructions about Tracing Buddy. I want you to pause now. Let everybody get the grid on their photo. Help your friends if your friends need help. Come back to the video and push play when everyone has the grid set up on their photo. Okay, so everyone has a grid set up on their photo using the Tracing Buddy app. Now you are going to make the same grid on your paper and I'm gonna give you instructions on how to do that. But basically what you should end up with is something like this, except for your lines will be lighter, mine are dark, um, so that you can use that to help you draw from um, the photo onto the paper. So you need a piece of paper. The sub has these and we'll get somebody to help pass these out. You need a pencil. Your own number two pencil is fine. Your own mechanical pencil is fine. If you do not have a pencil with you, they are over there in the little drawer. Um, and then you are also going to need one of these rulers. Um, there are a bunch of rulers in the drawer over there. Just get like, a couple of kids to grab some and pass them out, like two or three kids can go over to the drawer, grab the rulers, pass them out to the other kids. We don't, you don't all need to get up and get your own ruler. So you're going to get a ruler, a pencil, and a piece of paper. At the end of the period, please make sure to put the rulers back where they go in the drawer for the next class or this part of the video is going to be extremely confusing for them. Once you have gotten all of your supplies, come back to the video. So pause now, get your supplies, come back to the video and I will explain how to put the grid on the paper. Okay, so now that you have your photo gridded and tracing buddy, you have paper, pencil, ruler, we are going to make a grid on this paper that has the same proportions as the grid that you put on your photo. The grid on your photo was four by three. So we need to do the same thing on here. 
Now, I do wanna make it clear that I am doing my paper horizontal. If your photo is vertical, you will also do your paper vertical, but this is what fits in frame as I'm recording. So you can do the same thing. Just keep in mind that if your photo is four by three instead of four by three, that's totally fine. You'll just turn your paper at the end of it. But this is how we're gonna start. So if you were actually in class with me, I would make you um, do a whole bunch of math with me to figure this out, but you're not, you get to skip that. So we're gonna just do it together. So this paper is 12 inches by nine inches. I need 12 to be divided into four equal sections. So I am going to make dots every three inches because four times three is 12. So I'm gonna put my ruler up here at the top I am going to line it up as best I can. I am going to put a dot or just like a little mark at three, six, and nine. And then I am going to move down here to the bottom of my paper and do the same thing. Line it up, put a mark at three, six, and nine. Then I'm gonna come in here and connect these I am doing mine fairly dark because I know that it's already going to be tough to see this on the screen. You need to do yours as lightly as you possibly can. You want to make this so light that you can just barely see it because that's going to make it easiest to erase at the end of the project. So I'm going in here like this and I have my sections divided into three inch squares. Well, they're not squares yet, but they will be. But I've got three inch sections and I have four of them to match the proportion of the grid. So I want you to pause it here. Let everyone in the class get four three inch sections. Again, you're making a mark at three, six, and nine to get that. So pause here. Let everyone catch up to this. It should just take maybe one or two minutes. Let everyone catch up and then come back to the video in a second. Okay. Now that we're back, we are going to do the same thing over here on this side. This side of the paper is nine inches long. Nine divided by three, because that's how many boxes we need, is three. So you're gonna do the same thing you did here, except you are going to put marks at three and six. You don't have to put a mark at nine because it's already at the edge of the paper. Then I'm gonna go down here and do the exact same thing on this side. Put a mark at three and six and then I am going to connect with my ruler not eyeballing it doing a good job with my ruler okay and then I have a grid on my paper that matches the proportion of my grid on my photo and that's exactly what you want so pause here let everyone get to this point help your neighbor help people at other tables don't get up and wander around the room saying who needs help but like if you see someone who is struggling and you have finished your grid be nice help people get all of this done and then come back to the video when the whole class is caught up okay i am imagining by the point that you have downloaded tracing buddy set up the grid on your photo gotten your supplies Put the grid on your paper and everyone in the class is to the same point we are probably pretty near the end of the period maybe i'm wrong you know it's super fast you got it done in 20 minutes that's incredible i'm super proud of you but if we're near the end of the period that's totally fine you're just gonna you know put your name on these you're gonna put them in your portfolio and you're gonna come back to them what i need you to do for the remainder of this period and thursday and friday i need you to be working on drawing the shapes and lines that you see on your photo onto your paper. So really studying where each line intersects each grid line, looking at where shapes go, looking at how big things are and how small things are, really, really, really studying the photo using the grid to help you and lightly sketching that onto your paper. It, you want it to be as light as possible because we need to be able to make changes, but lightly sketching that from your photo to your paper. Really, really studying it, really doing a good job with the proportions. Ninth grade, this is gonna be tough because you are working with facial features. I'm not gonna pretend like it is not tough. Um, 
really, really, really studying the different features, the different things, eighth graders, you're studying the different objects that are in your photo. What we're really looking for is accuracy, accuracy of the lines, accuracy of the shapes. That means that everything is the size that it needs to be, the placement that it needs to be. We are not looking for good. It should not look like a good piece of art right now. It's going to look kind of crazy. Ninth grade, especially with portraits, portraits are absolutely horrifying until like the last 10%. So if yours looks horrifying, you're probably doing fine. I did one a couple of years ago that literally looked like Voldemort until like the last day of me working on it. What we're really looking for is that you're getting those shapes and lines where they need to be. Then when I come back, then we will talk about the shading and stuff like that. Please do not start shading. Even if you 100% know what you're doing, you are so confident in this project, you could do it with your eyes closed, you do not need for anything. Do not start shading until I get back. If you are done with your drawing, you are happy with it, you think that there is absolutely nothing else that you can add to it, there will be a place for you to turn it in on Google Classroom, so that way I can kind of see the progress that you've made, and the sub will have work for you to do when you are done with that. I don't want you to like finish halfway through Thursday and think that you're gonna go ahead and start shading to get ahead. Please do not do that. Please just finish the line drawing. So let's, um, the placement of things, even some of the details of things, if there's going to be um, eighth graders, if you're doing an object that like has words on it, you can go ahead and like block out where those words are gonna go. A good idea is sometimes to even like block out where shadows and highlights, like if ninth graders, if you're looking at a portrait, you can see that there's like gonna be a shadow right here, kind of outline where that shadow is going to go. Um, get as many details just drawing as you possibly can, but don't start shading or coloring or anything like that. I really, really, really want to focus on the accuracy and getting it where it needs to be because I would hate to come back and you've done an excellent job shading, um, but then we look at it and realize that something was like an inch and a half too far to the left and then we have to erase the entire thing and start over. So all I want you to do is get the grid done and then spend some time really working on the accuracy. Here is my rule for tracing, because if we were in class, somebody would ask and I would, I would talk about this. I don't mind if you need to occasionally trace little bits and pieces to get them where they need to go. So ninth graders, if you have attempted to draw the notes four times now, and it is just absolutely not working for you, it is okay with me if you zoom in on your iPad to make sure that the squares on the iPad are the same size as the squares on the paper, turn up the brightness of your iPad, kind of put the paper on top of it just to help you get the shape of the nose where it needs to go. Eighth grade and ninth grade, you should not be tracing the entire thing. Um, that's not really what we're doing here and it's not going to be nearly as helpful as you think it's going to be. But absolutely, if you're struggling with something and it is not coming together for you and you know that like no matter how many times you try, you're not going to be able to get that particular thing. I don't mind if you need to trace that thing to get the shape of it right, to get the placement of it right, to get the size of it right. That is okay with me. I don't mind minor tracing for this. That will be absolutely okay. So grids done on the photo and on the paper, line drawing using a pencil done as lightly as possible so that you can just almost barely see that it's there. That should be done. When you are done with that, whether you are done with that, on Thursday or on Friday, take a picture, submit it on Google Classroom, there is a place for you to submit it, and then see the sub to find out what you should be doing after that. If you are not finished with the line drawing by the end of the period on Friday, you need to take that home with you, do that over the weekend, and have it whenever you come on Tuesday. This is The line drawing is something that we would normally spend one period on, and I'm giving you two because like I say, I'm not gonna be there to help you. You may have to get you know, friends to help you. Nobody can draw on your paper. I should say that right now. I don't care if you can't draw the notes. You can't ask your friend to draw the notes for you. You just can't. Um, but like if you wanna get some advice from people, if you want to um, play around and like sketch some things in your sketchbook to try to help you get stuff on there, or eighth graders, if you wanna flip it over on the back or get a blank sheet of paper to kind of mess around with different ways of drawing stuff to get it there, you can totally do that. So I'm giving you two class periods assuming that it takes you most of Wednesday today to get the grid done. I'm giving you two class periods to really get an accurate line drawing of exactly what your photo looks like. So ask your friends if you need any help. You can send me an email. I will do my absolute best to get back to you if I can. 
Um, other than that, I hope you'll have a good rest of the week and good weekend, and I will see you next week.